Dave Parody of thinkoutsidetheslide.com here. In this video I want to show you how to create a Gantt chart by using a table uh, in PowerPoint. This was, was first suggested to me by a fellow PowerPoint MVP Julie Turberg and I want to show you t the techniques that I've used to do this. And it starts with inserting a table on the slide. So I've got a blank slide here. I'm going to say insert table but the number of rows and columns that they give you uh, on this grid is not enough for what we're going to use. So I'm going to go down to the item here to insert a table and now I can actually specify the number of columns and number of rows. Now when you're doing this the reason for using a table instead of just drawing uh, shapes or rectangles by hand is because you want greater accuracy. In most cases we're going to be looking at a project that spans a few months and so what we're going to want to do is to maybe uh, show each of the tasks by which weeks they occur. So what I would suggest is in that typical format what you would want to do is you would want to have five columns for each month and then you're going to need one column on the left hand side for the labels. So let's say I'm looking at a three month project so I would have 15 columns for my uh, time and then one additional one for the label. So I'm going to I'm going to say 16 columns and the number of rows how many rows do I need? Well I need one row for each of the tasks plus an additional row for the top headers which will be the month names. So um, I'm just going to do something very simple so I'm going to have let's say four tasks plus one so I'm going to need five rows. Click OK and it gives me the table that we're used to seeing. First thing you're going to do is to remove all the formatting. So in our table styles drop this down and go to absolutely no formatting. No lines, no borders, anything like that because we're going to set those ourselves uh, that we need. So the first thing we need to do is you need to set this first column to be wider than all the other ones so that it can contain the task names. So I'm going to select all the cells in this column. I'm going to go to the table tools layout and I'm going to increase the width. You need to use this particular field here and increase the width as opposed to just simply dragging because the dragging only restricts you to within the boundaries of the table. So when I start increasing this you see the entire table starts to grow. So I'm going to increase it to that wide. Now what I can do is, is I can drag the table and what I want to do is I want to make the table as big as possible uh, to cover up the width of the slide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take the right boundary here and drag it over. There we go. Oh well it increased all of the columns to be bigger but I don't need this first one to be bigger. I already set it. So what I can do is I can drag this one back. You go, but Dave, now you've you've got this one column bigger than all the other ones. Well, that's easy to fix. I'm going to highlight all of those columns. And when you highlight them, you can see how this is wider. What you can do is then use this command here, distribute columns. And you can see the description. It says across the width of all the selected columns, make them all equally the same width. So I click on that and immediately it's made them equal. So this makes it a lot easier for you. So now we've set up our um, columns the way we want them to. Now what we need to do is we need to set the months at the top here. So what I'm going to do because we said we're going to have five weeks for each month. So I'm going to select the first five cells in this first row and I'm going to say merge the cells and I'm going to center it and I'm going to type in let's say May is the first month of this project. Then I'm going to select the next five. Again, merge the cells, center it, June. And then my last month here, merge, center, and type in July. Okay, so I have all of those set. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in uh, my task names. So let's say uh, I have some different tasks. So I've got some de a design task. I have um, an approval process that I have to go through. Then I can construct and uh, turn it over to the maintenance people. So I've got each of my labels put in there. 
And there we go. So now what we need to do is, is, is when we are drawing our bars, and we're going to do that by filling in uh, cells, what I need to do is I need to horizontally, I need to split them so they don't run into each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the cells in the second row down, and I'm going to go to the design tab, and I'm going to set the pen color for the borders. I'm going to set it to the background color, which in this case is white. And then I'm going to say, in terms of the borders that I want, I want insert inside horizontal borders. So that gives me horizontal dividers between each of the rows. So that's a, that sets that. And then what we can do is, when we want to distinguish between the months, May and June, what I can do is I can select all of the cells that are at the end of May, the last of the May column, and then I can set the pen color here, let's say, to a gray, and then set the border here to just to be to the right. And then I can do the same thing for June, same border to the right, and now what I've done is visually I've broken up May, June, and July with a nice little light gray border that people can see. So now once I've done that, I can start to say when do these tasks happen. So let's say May, the first four weeks, is the design task. So I select those cells, and then I give them a shading. So I might pick, let's say, my default blue here. And then the approval takes a couple of weeks after we've done the design. Let's shade that. The construction takes most of the time shade that and then our turnover actually has an overlap with the construction because we can start turning stuff over as soon as it's done and shade that. Now what I've got is I have a Gantt chart. And I've put it in slideshow mode here for a moment. You'll see how when you have an overlap between the construction and turnover there's still a little bit of a gap there so you don't run into it. Now what you've done is you've created a Gantt chart that has a lot of accuracy because you're able to get it down to the week level within a month and it's very clean and easy. It's easy to change it as well if the approval task for example has to move you can simply highlight those two cells Oops. highlight those two cells and in the design shading no fill and let's say then they have to move over here we can simply shade it. So it's very easy to change where the different bars are positioned in the Gantt chart. So that's how you create a Gantt chart using a table. It gives you greater accuracy than just drawing the rectangles by hand.